Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on youtube.com slash Russell Gamer and FX TV. I'm the Russell Gamer, Double B Billy Boutro, and along with the incomparable Lance Moss from Lance Moss TV, this is gonna be our Impact Wrestling Review for the week of May 29th, 2014. I'm gonna say right off the bat, overall on this week's Impact, it was well there were a lot of instances where it was just kind of blase, if you kind of get what I'm saying, you know. Um, really, really, there was not a lot of high spots to talk about in the match, uh, including the whole show, I should say. You know, you know, especially looking at this opening segment, Lance, Bullery coming out saying he's going to get his revenge by putting MVP Kenny King, Lashley, uh, EC3, Rockstar Spud, and Dixie Carter all through a table. Um, the Bullery ends up getting jumped by EC3 and Rockstar Spud, and when help came out in the form of, of Eric Young, Austin Aries, and the Wolves, um, they clear the ring except for poor little Rockstar Spud, who hid under a table. Lance. Well, then we did see a little high spot because didn't uh, they put make potato tables? Oh, yes, uh, with a rock star spot going through a table courtesy of a, a top rope powerbomb. A little bit from, predictable, but a <laughs> hey, spud going through a table, I approve. <laughs> yes, and um, because of that opening segment, we get what the next match is. Um, it was a six-man tag, Austin Aries and the Wolves taking on MVP Kenny King and Bobby Lashley. Needless to say, Lance, this was a very chaotic six-man tag action everywhere at one point I was even talking to the shining star uh, Rick head last night and he, um, he even said it himself that this was indeed a very chaotic style w w way they formulated all the spots into this match really not a lot of fluid movement one would say in, into this um, opening contest uh, well the spot with DB Richards doing the double stomp on poor poor Kenny King it was just so reminiscent of what happened between Richards and Paul London in Ring of Honor, if you guys remember that. If you don't, oh. if, if you don't remember that, just you know, look that up you know, here on YouTube and guarantee you will be having the same reaction as Lance Moss just had. As a, it wasn't as vicious and, as a, and concussive inducing as the one that uh, Paul London suffered, but it still looked... Like he got him in the shoulders, but uh, Lashley ends up spearing Richards, and MVP hits the player's boot to get the victory. A lot of people, Lance, on the Facebook page, not a fan of MVP King and Lashley as a group. It, well, it's, they're starting to go way too obvious they're copying the WWE. Yeah. And people want originality in wrestling, or at least some space between the ripping off. Like, if they were ripping off, oh, I don't know, Attitude Era's main angles, that might be okay. Or WCW main angles, that would be okay. But blatantly ripping off of something that happened the week before on Raw, that's not okay. 
Yeah, and if uh, what happened with that one isn't evidence of uh, what they're doing in TNA as you know, far as copywriting and and ripping off uh, storylines that WWE's doing. They did something later on in the evening, but we'll tell you about that when we get to it in, in that point of the review. Um, following that, we had the in-ring debut. Debut, if I, that's easy for me to say, in-ring debut of Bram taking on Tigre Uno, who pretty much just job worse than Sin Cara did in this match. Um, Lance, what are your thoughts about the in-ring debut of Bram? He's good. I mean, they t- to me, Tigre Uno deserves more than to be a damn jobber. I agree. I agree hands down on, on that one there. But um, um, I'm... He did cut a promo after the match was over. The Please. only problem with that is the way he sounded on the microphone uh, was kind of like this. In the music industry, we call that eating the mic. Um, I think he was swallowing the mic at that point. Uh, so we really didn't understand what, where the, the segment was going when uh, T- uh, Bram took out the tire iron, but... We, you know, we did get the general idea, you know, from based on Magnus's reactions, and you know, in the fact that we can actually fluidly understand Magnus <laughs> on the microphone is the fact that uh, we now uh, J- uh, Magnus has challenged Bram to a match. Um, I'm I'm not sure when it's going to take place, if it's going to be next week or not, but uh, officially that's what happened was Magnus challenging his friend Bram. Br- uh, uh, Billy. I hate mm-hmm. to uh, correct you, but I think next week I heard them say... Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Say, next week it's going to be Willow. Oh, yes. So um, I'm, I'd like to know when they're going to actually officially do that. You know, if they're advertising Willow versus Bram. And I think I think it might be a, a no-DQ match. I am not entirely positive on, on that one. They didn't promote it the uh, proper uh, way. But um, up next, Bromance taking on the, the newly formed team of Gunner and Mr. Anderson. The way they they uh, put this team together, the way they're trying to package it is um, they're saying that there's a, a common bond with uh, Gunner and Mr. Anderson both being in the military and something to do with the, the same uh, Shaw incident. You know, we've uh, we've been seeing the past couple of weeks um, uh, vignettes of Samuel Shaw in the loony bin of sorts uh, with uh, Gunner coming to talk to him about it. And, of course, we know that Mr. Anderson is the one who's responsible for putting him in there. That and the uh, nut shot from Christy Henning. Um, <laughs> Poor bastard. Romance, romance kind of jobbed in this match. Uh, you know, it, it's something, you know, we don't like to necessarily repeat over and over again, but that's pretty much what what happened is um, Anderson hit the mic check and Roddy E and Gunner with the top rope headbutt on a... They pick up the wind, but what I don't understand, Lance, is what followed that with the menagerie. Well, okay. First off, I gotta say I'm a big fan of the menagerie. I love some. I love kind of creepy, weird, cheesy ass groups. I thought I, mean, I thought you were a fan of Rebel. Well, like, that too. But I just weird, like when groups make you go, "What the hell is this?" I dig that, man. <laughs> and if they have a hot chick in there too, more power to them. And and Nux, uh, you know, tr- starting to dress the gimmick now. You know, coming out in almost one would say ringmaster uh, attire. And we're not talking about Stone Cold Steve Austin either. Uh, I wonder how many people actually got that reference. Um, basically, what happened is uh, Robbie and Jesse they get scared, right off the ring. And at least DJ Zima Ions basically get one arm flapjack by the freak. Uh, I almost said freak Rob Terry, but that's exactly who it is. It's Rob Terry under a mask. Um, and that's uh, pretty much how they did it, you know. I'm going to say, is any time we get to see Rebel uh, of the Menagerie? Two thumbs up. That, yeah, that's basically the, the, the gist of it. Yeah. Um, DJ Zima Ion, you poor bastard. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of poor masters, up next we had Dixie Carter in another segment, which is, by the way, guys, already officially deemed as my worst segment of the night, and pretty much from Lance as well, the worst Correct. segment of the night. Anything to do with Dixie Carter, because she is terrible, 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 or as Charles Barkley would say, terrible. The only way she could ever make a non the worst segment is if she announced she's leaving the company. That'd be best segment of the night. Yeah, it was basically, you know, a continuation of the uh, the 
um, angle they tried to start last week, you know, um, and Dixie Carter conducting some business with um, MVP saying you're either going to do it the easy way or the Dixie Carter way. And with, with the Dixie Carter way, meaning that she would go to the TNA board of directors and point out to them the abuse of power that MVP had. MVP said, go ahead and try that. I got a lot of money, access to a lot of money, and a lot of money means a lot of power. My money against your inherited money is basically what MVP said about that one. And then they get interrupted by EY, Eric Young, and Bully Ray, both with carrying weapons in tote to kind of confront the entire menagerie. Well, not the menagerie, but the menagerie of people that's in the ring uh, at that point in time. And it follows up to MVP making a match. For Bully Ray versus Eric Young, and from what MVP said to guarantee that this matchup actually does happen, he's going to appoint a special guest referee in the form of EC3. That's a good idea. He's starting to get a little, a bit of a familiar vibe with this guy's. Rip off! Yeah, that's. Sorry, I have a chest infection. <laughs> yeah, so does everyone in TNA. Um, now, earlier in the night. Brittany, TNA's newest knockout, um, goes up to Madison Rain and says, you know what, I have a tag team uh, match against beautiful people. I want to get revenge for what they did to me. Of course, if you guys don't remember, they did the whole paper bag thing, which I'm pretty sure Cody Rhodes isn't happy about. Uh, Madison Rain turns it down and says, you know what, if you want to be my friend, that's fine. Go about it differently. Don't get involved with the beautiful people. I did, and I'm still recovering from whatever you know, angle they did with her and, and whatnot, but that's pretty much how she, she put it. You know, she's still trying to recover from that mistake she made with the beautiful people. So um, later on, then, she, done, she confronts Gail Kim, who's also very fuming over the, the beautiful people and what Angelina Love and uh, Madison Rain have done to her, and when she came up to her uh, with the idea for the tag match, of course, Gail Kim was already on board. Um, as far as the match goes, uh, Brittany appeared to be o a little overzealous um, in the match, kind of hinting at some familiarity in here. Let, 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 let us elaborate. Let us elaborate on that. And, and you know, Brittany ends up getting hit with the uh, Botox injection. You know, she tags herself in, um, you know, after Gail Kim was having the advantage, which we all know, you know, when something like that's happened, we just know that th that person's going to be the loser, and uh, that's what happened. Uh, um, she felt the Botox injection, and then after the match was over, um, some guy? Brittany like Will wanted watch. to talk to Madison Rain. You know, ask her why she rejected her idea to when I mean, all she wanted to do was quote be with her Lance what was the very first thing that came to your mind other than the obvious when you heard those words out of Brittany's mouth that she wanted to quote be with Madison Rain uh I gotta be, let's be honest, uh, first, HLA. Yeah. No sweat, man. I'll catch you tomorrow night. But, break ball with Mickey James. There you go. There you go. There you go. And, and that's what everyone said on the Facebook page, and that's what, what, uh, I felt, and no, that was it. my initial reaction, man. It's just like the storyline with Mickey James and Trish Stratus. That's the way they're pegging it, and that's the way it went. But we also get the um, information um, in this promo that Madison Rain has cashed in her rematch clause for the Knockouts title and will be challenging Angelina Love next week for the Knockouts title. Um, all I can say is... I'm nervous about Brittany. <laughs> HLA! HLA! <laughs> oh, man, where's Eric Bischoff when we need him? Oh, wait, isn't he somewhat of an involved in TNA? To get rid of the, he's probably trying to get rid of TNA because I still think he's getting out because Hogan's gone. That's just me. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So. <laughs> but, um, we wouldn't want to get the hell out of TNA. 
most of the staff do. Right. Now, guys and gals, if you wanted more evidence to support our theory of TNA kind of copying WWE storylines, here's more evidence to kind of support that theory. Uh, the main event, not only did we have a special guest referee in EC3, we had a special guest ring announcer in Kenny King, a special guest enforcer in Bobby Lashley, and a special guest timekeeper in MVP. Hmm. Kind of feels familiar. Kind of like a, a sense of deja vu, Lance, wouldn't you say? Yeah, we just need some uh, guest commentators and... I just have a feel I'm seeing something all over again, but like t well, can't do a direct rip off TNA. You just can't do it. Yeah, because unlike the uh, Batista and Seth Rollins match, which was uh, by far a superior match to what they oh, did with, yeah. Bully, with Bully Ray and EY, I think they just did that for the purposes of you know two things happening. One to uh, see EC3 get a get a boot in the face from Bully Ray, which was uh, one of the things that happened. Um, another thing that happened, they started a beat down, you know, MVP, Kenny King, and Lashley, they started beating down EY, and Bully Ray, when we get the return of the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe, and he makes the save, and Kenny King kind of feels the muscle buster, uh, you know, and they end the show with Samoa Joe staring down MVP, and in my mind, uh, Lance, that's really perfect timing to bring back Samoa Joe, because if you remember, he was a disgruntled employee, like, I think after lockdown, and we haven't seen him since then until this night on Impact when uh, we see him make his return and make the save. To me, I think that's pretty much really good timing for TNA to actually bring him back and insert him into the storyline. Yeah, that was definitely one of the high spots of the night. Definitely. On well, the night that didn't have very many high spots, that was definitely one of them. I mean... Yeah, I, I got to agree with you on that one. So um, on that note, guys and gals, it's time to go into our overall scores and our picks for best and a worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling this week. And as you guys heard, um, my worst segment already, you know, anything to do with Dixie Carter because she cannot cut a promo to save her life. And I, after we saw Dixie's team lose, I thought we were going to have finally have a breath of fresh air, fresh air. Dixie Liss air, but apparently that hasn't been the case. Uh, best match of the night, I'm going to give it two mentions. Um, I'm going to give it to, well, the first one to Bromance and Gunnar and Anderson, because actually that was entertaining, especially with the post-match activity of the Menagerie making their appearance to scare the living Jesus out of the Bromance. And... But I gotta go for best segment. You know the spot returning with Samoa Joe, because again you already explained it. You know when Samoa Joe first left after lockdown, he was first the first real disgruntled employee for MVP. But they really couldn't do anything with it since at that time both characters were face. It's more adequate now that now they have Samoa Joe as the face and MVP. Who I still said um, a few weeks ago. You know, when TNA turned him, uh, what I said, quote, absurdly heel. So I think that was a good time to bring him back. So, But other than that, the show was just kind of really not there, to be honest. I got to go two out of five on this one, guys. Um, Lance, what about you? What's your overall score and what's your pick for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling? Overall, this show could not keep my, could barely keep my attention. I mean, so I had to give it a 1.5. It would, they just need to seriously work for, on stuff for next week. I mean, for some of the matches they got planned, I, it could be good next week. I'm not saying that, but like you said, best match to me had to be the uh, Gunner and Anderson versus the Bromance, but to me, that's mainly because the at the post uh, match activity by the Menagerie for me. And worst, screw Dixie. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Yeah, we're well, yeah, not Andy. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, and, actually, I have, I have, my best has to be, uh, Spud going through a table. <laughs> Anytime Spud gets a little wood, that makes you happy. I can't believe I just no, said that. No, I think it's more your department, but okay. <laughs> Anyway, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, what we want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Impact Wrestling this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling this week? Thoughts on the return of Samoa Joe? Your reactions to Brittany kind of channeling her best Mickey James, you know, out there with Madison Rain instead of Trish Stratus being out there? What are your thoughts about that? We definitely want to hear from you guys out there. Be sure you put your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Lance, what can fans expect to see when they come visit your channel over on YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV? Album reviews, NASCAR discussion videos, Redneck Gourmet Cooking videos, and whatever's possible in my head. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, why hadn't you? <laughs> Fans, don't forget to like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGSTV, and don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash ZFXTV Network if you haven't already. So for the incomparable Lance Moss from Lance Moss TV and the WrestleGamer, don't be on the Boudreaux, saying thank you very much for watching.